When you hear the words artist studio, what do you think of? A place of creativity and free expression? A place to experiment and dream up new projects? My husband agreed with those descriptions and then added, I also think of a mess. Well, that's the truth, at least for me. Georgia O'Keeffe said, To create one's own world takes courage. This is very true for us creative types who need to carve out a space in which to practice this calling on our hearts and minds. Having a dedicated workspace like these well-known artists is indeed a privilege. Let's look at a few. John Singer Sargent trained in Paris and ended up painting all over the world. Claude Monet had a studio in Giverny, France, but really preferred painting out of doors whenever possible. And Frida Kahlo, who had polio as a child and was in a terrible auto accident, painted from her bed at one point using a special easel. Here is the rugged and remote view from Georgia O'Keeffe's New Mexico studio. This neat and tidy workspace belonged to painter-illustrator Norman Rockwell. And Jackson Pollock's famous drip paintings look like they were done in an unfinished garage. Louisiana folk artist Clementine Hunter never did use an easel. In fact, art dealers learned to look for her fingerprints and paint on the back of edges. Chuck Close did his massive scale abstract portraits while working from a wheelchair. And one of my favorite local artists is Arthur Price, who works alone in a barn out on his farm. Although I've never worked in a barn, my own studio has definitely changed over the years. In high school, my favorite place to draw was on top of my bed, kind of like Henri Matisse seen here working from bed, only I used a lap desk. And as a young mom in Louisiana, I found the kitchen table to be a great place to work, just like my grandson's. But since we had to eat on a regular basis, my husband turned our backyard porch into a lovely, if hot, place for me to leave out my art supplies. A move to Kentucky led me to declare the laundry room as my special art place. Only thing was, lint from the dryer didn't sit too well on oil paintings. Finally, we moved to beautiful Birmingham, which brought me to a home with a roomy basement, and then most recently, to a light-filled garage in Crane Hill, Alabama. What you don't see in these last two photos is the true extent of the mess my husband referred to. I realized that I, and maybe you as well, needed some inspiration from the pros. Inspiration. If you have knowledge, let others light their candles in it. I found three local professional artists who generously shared with me some of their favorite things about where they work. Watercolorist Bob Moody, who's recovering from ankle surgery, and sculptor, mixed media, and caustic artist Marilyn Wilson let me step into their studios, while oil painter Terry Strickland shared a wonderful video that she had made about her favorite studio hacks and tips. Let's go get some light and inspiration from these great talents. Hi Gail, welcome to my studio. I'm Bob Moody. This is English Village. That is my uh, Japanese maple tree we planted 37 years ago. Outside our studio, which is a wonderful view. It's almost filling up that space. And of course, I've got my music system, uh, reference material, uh, then a sink, and my palette and brushes, and that's all it takes in watercolor. And 
and that chart on the wall, which has been there for 30, 40 years, is a uh, David Lyle Mallard out of the book, The Joys of Watercolor, just a way of mixing paint and the combination. He has a 40, 40 color palette, and so 40 to the power of 40 would be how many mixtures? A bunch. A bunch. Is that about how many you have on your palette right now? Right. That's my. That is a his palette, which I've added a few extra colors that have only been invented in the last few years. <laughs> and these are some favorite brushes. And those are my standard brushes. It's just a mop and a, a number, I guess, a fifteen and a number five. That is a very good little brush. You can this draw little one? hair with that. This Princeton? Is, you're right. Good to know. Now, when do you use rubber cement? Oh, sometimes as a mask. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, as opposed to frisk it. Or here's another masking new pen. Maybe Oh, yes, with these little tiny little point nibs. Right, you can get lines with that. Our rubber cement works. I'm gonna take it off. And just to show people how tiny this is. Here we go. Have I have my art supply. So I get most of these things. Good, okay. Cheap right. Joe, occasionally I'll order a ream of paper. Mm -hmm. What kind of paper do you like to work on? I've, I don't like to have to stretch it, so I use 300 pound. And uh, as a student, we used to pay 35 cents a sheet, but now it's something like $10.50 wholesale. Just last week, I got the proofs on our latest book, which are paintings of 30A in uh, the Panhandle of Florida which is about 28 mile strip off Highway 98. It was called 38. Oh. And it was, I did that during COVID. It was something for me to do. So <laughs> behind there was probably a hundred paintings. Well, behind you, right here in and this lovely the, portfolio. You know, I just got them in order. Oh, really? In the book. So you don't want me to flip them oh, around. <laughs> Look at this. I'm going to just randomly. <gasps> oh. When do you think this book will be coming out? In October. Okay. Ooh, that's a great time. In, in yeah, time for, for the holidays. Right. Yes. Very good. And it, on 30A, there are only about three bookstores, so it ought to be pretty easy to, right. to market it. It should sell like hotcakes. I just have to mention one more favorite thing that uh, in your studio that you have. And that is the young lady who sits right here. Uh -huh. Yes. That's my techie, my wife, my everything. That's Rebecca. We love Rebecca. You Vanderbilt girls. Yeah. Stick together. Thanks, Bob. Welcome to my studio. Come in and let me show you what I do. My name is Marilyn Wilson from Birmingham, Alabama, and this is my studio. It's my refuge, my sanctuary. It's where I love to be. It has, you can come in this room and it has a welcoming feeling of peace and quiet and creativity. Over, I have it sort of divided into sections. This wall is my photography wall behind me. Um, and then I use these extra places, like as I finish work, I put it out so I can see how it's working out and what I need to do to further make it better. 
Over here is my main hangout place. This is a, a work in progress here. And it is, I did this drawing several years ago and I decided, I found it, I was going through my drawers and found it and decided, I think I'll make that a 3D piece because now I love doing 3D. So this is the start. I will post it on Facebook and the finish so you can see. But this is the figure. And she's actually going to be looking at a shooting star coming down at her. Because she is, her origins are, uh, is a shooting star. It landed on the top of this mountains. And she turned into this beautiful, luminous uh, superstar. <laughs> These are the mountains in progress, sky, and then over here, this is my favorite place to be. These, I have two work tables. I went into a restaurant one time, and I went back in the kitchen, and the chef had all of his tables around him, so he just turned and did his cooking in a circle. And I thought, wow, I said, that's what I've done here. This is basically all t my all table. I do everything on it, from drawing to painting, uh, encaustic. I do the encaustic up here. And over here is my play table. Now, my favorite things in, are in this corner. This table, my play table, is perfect because it you can raise it and lower it. If you want to stand up and work, or if you want to sit down and do detailed work, we can work here. Over here, my favorite thing, and I wish I had done it to everything in here, are the wheels. This table weighs a ton, and I like to be independent, and I have to have somebody do it all for me all the time. And so once I put wheels on this, I can move it anywhere without any struggle. Over here is my uh, printing, uh, where I do all my printing, my favorite tools. This is for encaustic. You, it had, it's like an old uh, ruling pen that we used to use in uh, advertising a long time ago. And you dip it into the, it's heated, so when you dip it into the wax, it fills up, and then you can draw with it on your line. And this is an example of some of the drawings, um, drawing onto the top of the wax. Then my other one, uh, I have been called a tool addict. I love tools. And when I hear an artist say, I have four tools and they're my favorite, I think, oh my God. I have tools everywhere, and I do, and I even have a tool drawer over here. So it's, tools are fascinating to me. Uh, in my, the Diamond Force uh, tools are my favorite, and they have the sharpest, best blade of any tool that is made, in my opinion has a nice soft cushion for your fingers. You can get good detail work with using it. Actually, when I say my favorite tools, all my tools are my favorite. And my chair is my favorite chair. <laughs> I don't have anything else to say. That's great, thanks so much. Welcome to Studio Hacks 101. So I wanted to show you some things I've done in my studio that really make my life easier and maybe are not necessarily that expensive. Well, let's look at a couple of things. This is the latest addition to my studio and it's a Yukon rolling tool chest. And we got it at uh, Harbor Freight, similar to like a DeWalt or Black & Decker tool chest. 
um, but it's a little bit cheaper, maybe just because it's an off-brand, but it's got amazing drawers. Everything that used to be on top of the Tabaret is now in drawers. And it's so awesome because they're right here on my side of the easel. And I can just, um, you know, get to them while I'm painting without having to get up and down. The other thing I really love is that I found this um, cookie sheet. It's a, some Teflon cookie sheet that I was trying to find a way to not have the beautiful wood surface get all yucky from all my solvents and oils and stuff. And so I have this little cookie sheet. I put rubber feet on the bottom so it doesn't slide around. Uh, and then I just keep all the messy stuff on here. And then that way, whenever I want to um, use the surface for a project, I can just move the cookie sheet and then I have this nice, beautiful surface to um, you know, lay out a painting that needs to be framed or I can put something out on it and use it for filming and uh, it's, just, it's just great. I love it. I also got these, um, you can add things to it. So there's magnetic hooks. I've got a magnetic paper towel holder, so you know, like that. A couple of hooks on the back so I have, can always find my tape measure put my visors on it and um, yeah, it's great. I love it. It replaces my old tabaret that was a microwave card I had picked up at a thrift store ages ago for about $25. I had reinforced it over the years and added the paper towel holder. But as you can see, it was very small and the top was always just full of stuff. I like to work on a vertical palette. So I want it to be upright and there's a couple reasons for that. Uh, it puts the paint in the same light as the painting and so the colors are easier to judge because they're both on the same uh, down plane catching the same amount of light. It's also I find easier on my shoulder painting a lot of hours it just helps with um, shoulder and back pain. So to figure out how to do this I had several different iterations before this model but this one is really working the best that I've ever had. What I have here it's a tripod TV mount and so you actually you know, if you bought it from Amazon, which is where I got it, you would mount your TV on these plates right here. And it could tilt, you know, there's a tilt in here so it can, can angle differently. The tripod worked better than other things I had before because it doesn't take up very much of a footprint, which is good because it doesn't get in the way of my tabaret and all of that. It's also height adjustable, which is perfect because sometimes I sit down and sometimes I stand up. So uh, what my husband did was he made a plate out of wood to fit the TV plate to. And then I wanted it mounted off to the side. You can see from the back. Um, I didn't want it mounted in the middle because that would put my tripod, you know, over here in the way. So I have, you know, I had him put this piece of wood mounted off to the side. And so the off center makes it work a lot better for, for that. And what I do is I just, I have my um, palette paper and I store it in the freezer in my Masterson palette. And then whenever I'm ready to paint, I just hook it onto a little piece of cardboard and then I'll, I can just clamp it onto that piece of wood. And then when I'm done painting for the day, I can just take it off, put it back in the palette and put it back in the freezer. And it's working great. Sometimes I have paint try to escape. You can see I actually have some blobs on the carpet. <laughs> but um, for the most part, I catch them in time. I bought this little rug specifically for that. <laughs> so. I'm not too worried about it. But. My student Becky designed what she calls a peace of mind box. It's really kind of brilliant, but I haven't incorporated one yet. It's made out of a cardboard box that will catch any paint that does manage to slide off the palette. This is my mall stick system that is very handy. I like sometimes to rest my hand on a stick and I didn't like resting it on the painting because it would mark up the painting. And also sometimes I work on very big paintings and it would be difficult to you know, have a, have a big enough mall stick. So I got this drapery rod and taped, taped it together here so it, it doesn't come apart. And then I could prop that on, on the top edge of the painting. And I did that for a little while, but then I didn't really like that because you know, it could still mark the edge of the painting. So we put this um, one by four up here and then to keep it from falling off the edges when I would let it go, because sometimes I don't want to use it, right? So I would just leave it laying on the one by four and it would fall off and crash into stuff and it was kind of a big disaster. So uh, we figured out to put wine corks on the end. And so now when I'm not using that, I can just 
prop it off to the side like that and it works pretty good and it's actually clamped to the back of the easel if you can see it right there it's just got a little bent piece of metal that we screwed just a little bit more and so i can move that up and down if i need to but i don't really need to because it works for a small painting like the one that's on my easel right now or for a bigger one this is my painting stool it, it specifically is made for painting and um, I love it. It probably was a bit of a splurge at the time when I bought it, but I've had it probably, I don't know, 10, 12 years, probably at least. But it's great because it, it angles so you can tilt it forward or back and it, and it goes up and down and it's on rollers. So for the times I'm sitting when I paint, it's just, it's just so convenient and way more comfortable than anything I've, else I've ever sat on. So uh, to me, it was a worthwhile investment and it has actually lasted a really long time. I have an anti-fatigue mat, which is not anything special, but I found that if I'm going to be in here for hours at a time, most days, even with the carpet, it was just so much easier to have this anti-fatigue mat. And uh, I really believe in it. I can turn it different ways, you know, depending on what, what painting I'm working on. So that's a great thing to have. These are Ikea picture ledges, and they were an investment that I made maybe last year, I would say. Uh, when I was trying to get more organized in the studio and they are fantastic. I love them so much. I can put sketches or paintings on them, small ones whenever they need to dry, you know, or just to store them when I, I don't exactly know what, what I'm going to do with them yet. But I've got them all on this wall and I also have them on this wall up high. So that really has stored a lot of my smaller paintings. It just saves up so much working space for other tables that, that I have in the studio. So it allows my table space to be active space that I can get to when I need it. This is something that I don't know if you can get hold of, but if you can, I really enjoy having it in my studio. Forstall Art Center in downtown Birmingham was getting rid of one of these paint cabinets and asked me if I wanted it. So this is where I store all of my Rembrandt paint. And it's, it's really nice to keep it organized and I only keep one tube out of all of the different colors that I use and that's in my tab array. So then this is where I can really see my inventory well and um, come here when I'm looking for different um, colors that I have in stock. I really like to repurpose old furniture for the studio. So this was a stereo cabinet that you know we were no longer using. So now it holds some junk and on the top of it, I have my computer monitor, which I paint from. Since I got so tired of trying to deal with bad prints, I'm, I'm working off of the uh, monitor now and I really like it. Here's the other one and I store varnish and spray cans of different things and just miscellaneous stuff. They were already on rollers, so that's pretty, pretty nice, especially for my computer. This is wire shelves that we put up and I'm actually using this shelf right now. It's got a painting on it, but um, I keep this one fairly empty so that whenever I want to do a still life, I can set it up on this. So that covers my studio hacks that I currently am using and they all could change tomorrow. Who knows? But for right now, this is working really well and I hope it's inspired you as you work on your studio space. As always, thank you for subscribing. Organization, a place for everything and everything in its place. Now that we've gotten inspired, Let's look at a few more ideas for setting up a studio. Some great things to have in the studio include a good work table and chair, some kind of easel, color balanced light, water access, good ventilation, and while you're at it, get some good supportive shoes. A great tip is to take advantage of vertical space. Go up to the ceiling with display shelves to put works in progress or other special pieces that bring you joy. Use pegboard or a large bulletin board where you have unused wall space. And don't forget clear shoe pocket organizers or wire shelving to hang behind a door for out of sight storage. Sooner or later, we seem to acquire more tubes and bottles of paint than we know what to do with, so here are some organizing ideas. Use little binder clips to hold tubes on a pegboard. 
stackable hardware bins with labels. I always say labels are your friends. A clear cosmetic or jewelry organizer allows quick access. If you have the space, the wide drawers of a tool cabinet can be wonderful. And my personal favorite is to organize paint by color families on cheap trays from the dollar store. In addition to mason jars or vases for brush storage, you might try using a planter filled with black-eyed peas. Take a piece of pink foam insulation or styrofoam taped to your palette to use as a brush holder. Or use those fabulous clear shoe pockets on the back of a door. Pencils and pens love to be lined up in a stacked organizer or I used a repurposed spice rack. Someone else found a new way to use a wine rack. If your canvas or paint panels get stacked up, you can sort them out with wood shelving or with wire shelving like this on the right where they used string to keep them separated. I needed a way to keep big sheets of mat board and foam core sitting vertically and up off the floor, so I repurposed an unused side table, turning it upside down. Voila! I've always longed for some beautiful flat files like those in Bob Moody's studio for storing full sheets of watercolor, but they can be pricey. Then one day I found this IKEA hack using multiple tabletops with extra legs works like a charm and for a fraction of the cost. Finally, a few more things that are nice to have. Furniture on wheels or rollers. If vintage is your thing, try using a suitcase to store old sketchbooks or use a vintage trash can for a splash of color. Repurpose furniture whenever you can. Notice I'm using the bottom drawer as vertical storage for some paint panels. If you have room, a comfy chair or sofa make a great place to sit and think on your next project. Finally, a great addition and good company is a studio pet like Zoe. Are you ready to dive in? How do we get motivated, especially when sometimes ruthless declutter is in order? Ask yourself, do I just need to tidy up or do a deep clean and declutter? What tools and materials need to be at the ready for me to do art? What is essential and what is fluff or clutter? Speaking of clutter, where does one start? Here is what works for me. Once I decide to do this, I set aside a couple of days. It didn't get like this overnight, so I know it will take a bit of time to fix. I start in one corner and work from left to right. Remember this corner, you'll see it again. If it's really overwhelming, I'll set a timer for 15 or 30 minutes and take periodic breaks. If something distracts me, and it usually does, I'll write down the distracting thought and park it to the side and tend to it later. The great thing about working in one direction around a room is that it helps me see progress and it keeps me going. Put like things together even if you have to set up a temporary card table to help sort things out. These see-through shoe boxes with built-in lids have changed my life. Once again, labels are your friends. Remove the non-essentials. Here's the rest of that corner. Why, for instance, is my phone number stuck to the side of this table? Do I really need to see that every day? Shop your house for things you can use in a new way, like a rug or an empty piece of furniture. And finally, once you've cleared out a section, give it a good clean. Who knows when it will next see the light of day. Get some music. 
It's easier than ever to grab a Bluetooth speaker, your phone, and bring your favorite music into your space. Put a to-get list by the door of your studio so you can consolidate errands the next time you go out. Smell something good like an oil diffuser or a nice candle, but maybe not with solvents around. An electric kettle for tea or coffee make it easier for me to stay in my studio and keep working. Treat your feet to an anti-fatigue mat and allow some clean, empty surfaces to stay clean and empty for a while. Once we get our space like we want it, we need to be motivated to get in there and do the work of an artist. So here are a few encouraging words from David Nichols. And then lastly, you must find your own voice. Ultimately, you have to be expressed on that canvas or paper. That's what really matters. You have to paint from your heart. Um, otherwise, you'll just be a poor copy of someone else, which is not the ultimate goal. So find your own voice, paint from your heart. That will automatically occur the more you paint. Your personality and your, your idiosyncrasies, your uniqueness will all come out. You can't help that. And it will certainly serve you very well because people will recognize what you do and, and be attracted to it, I'm sure. So good luck with that. And uh, I hope you have a good rest of the day. Thank you. Here is the bonus section with some peeks into the studios of some of our members. So that you know I'm trying to practice what I'm preaching, here are the first two walls before and after of my studio. Beverly Phillips was the only brave soul who sent me before and after photos of her studio. Martha Fulgham is full of great organizational ideas. Kathy Ferris has a warm and cozy wood paneled studio space, while Dee Falls declares that her favorite studio is the out of doors en plein air. Sharon Reed Lancaster has definitely put the walls and shelves of her art room to good use. Ever wonder where Ron Lewis makes his artistic magic happen? Here's the main part of his studio. And Bev Bates has done a great job maximizing her storage space. And Christy Bunn keeps turning out beautiful commissions from this organized space. Are you ready? Let's do this.